What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. I've been a little behind on my reading, so I figured I'd actually start going over some other comic-related content so people can get some cool reading orders and things like that uh, if they want to follow along with different um, books and catch up on some of the classic characters. So this is a comprehensive list of every Spider-Man omnibus that's out there. Um, I am intentionally omitting things like Ultimate Spider-Man or Miles Morales Spider-Man, which I think I actually have a volume uh, pulled out right here of such, but it's a different character, so um, we are going to not cover those uh, during this interview. Uh, if you are interested in that, uh, of course, uh, I'll, I'll uh, answer what's out there uh, via the comments below. But this is the, the actual canon Spider-Man, uh, for better or worse, uh, to some degree. And I'll, I'll go over why there's some non-canon stuff but uh, over the course of this video. The first volume is Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1, which is the original Stan Lee and Steve Ditko stuff. This is the stuff that made Spider-Man great. This is the stuff that um, most people uh, recognize with Spider-Man. He created a lot, or Ditko and, and Lee created a lot of the characters, like the Vulture, Dr. Octopus, um, even even getting into like this Green Goblin stuff that's about to hit uh, and, and blow up and become a much bigger storyline. But that all starts right in here. Craven the Hunter, uh, Mysterio, all of the all the lizard, all of the great uh, villains that you recognize with Spider-Man, and, and he ends up fighting over and over again. It collects Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, Spider-Man 1 through 38, Annual 1 and 2, and Strange Tales Annual 2 and Fantastic Four Annual Number 1. Now these uh, annuals that are listed afterwards are thrown in there because they are crossover uh, material with uh, the actual book. This volume contains the entirety of the Steve Ditko run on Spider-Man. So if you are looking to just collect the Ditko work because you're a big Ditko fan, like, you know, obviously my channel's been promoting a lot of Ditko stuff lately, this is the volume for you to get. Um, and it is readily available as of this video, um, and they reprint this pretty often because it's a pretty popular volume. Now, this series continues along of these numbered Amazing Spider-Man series. This is volume two, um, and at this point, uh, John Romita Sr. has taken over the art. You see some of his beautiful art. Uh, I love Romita's art uh, on the cover here. And this volume collects uh, issues 39 through 30, 67, annuals 3 through 5, and then it's a Spectacular Spider-Man 1 and 2. Now, that's not the Spectacular Spider-Man comic, which uh, it comes later and has several hundred issues of it also. But this is the Spectacular Spider-Man magazine where they had a couple magazines and it went over the Green Goblin story and kind of built a lot of that background there. It's really good stuff. Uh, some of the better uh, issues of this. Uh, it contains famous material, of course, the reveal of, of who Green Goblin is and that he's Norman Osborn. And then this beautiful Spider-Man No More issue. It's one of the more famous ones through this. You get the Spider Slayer incidents in here. Um, uh, very good stuff also. After that comes volume three. Now volume three goes from issues 68 to 104. And this covers uh, a lot of Spider-Man's next future. At this point uh, within Spider-Man, a lot of the stories get a little bit repetitive. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of one-off stories that kind of like just rehash some of the characters in here um, but from before. Jim Mooney ends up doing a lot of the breakdowns while Ramita is kind of just doing layouts uh, towards the end of this. And so it's, it's a change in the era of Marvel where they're preserving brand a little bit more than before. Now there is a new character introduced in here called the Prowler, which is really good. And of course, Morbius shows up uh, later on also, which is uh, Morbius, sorry. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, which is a cool new character, uh, and of course Marvel's doing a lot with them right now. Um, this volume is very out of print and very hard to find. So um, there is a way to collect a lot of this material, though, in the form of Epic Collections. And the Epic Collections go up through issue 93 as of this, um, as of this video, um, which is volume 5 of the Epic Collection. Volume 6 will, of course, cover 
a lot of the material in here also. Um, and so uh, right now, if you want to go up to the Epic Collections and then read from issues 94 through 104, that's how you would be able to read Spider-Man in order um, if, you, if it's hard for you to find these omnibuses. And then we get to volume four. And so not many Marvel omnibuses have volumes four to them. Uh, in fact, I think there's the only one. So uh, as of right now, there, oh, Avengers has volume four also. Uh, but Spider-Man and Avengers have gone up through volume four, um, and the, which is where really the spot where Stan Lee has stopped writing and other people have taken over, Gary Conway in this instance. Um, and uh, for this, uh, most of them, most other ish, uh, most other things, oh, I guess there's a Thor volume four also. Sorry about that. Well, most other series uh, don't really get this many issues printed. Uh, Spider-Man's kind of special in that regard. And X-Men Volume 4 is coming out later this year. So they are starting to like get towards this, but this is a lot of issues. We are getting to Amazing Spider-Man 105 through 140, all the way up to 142. So this is just before the Clone Saga uh, begins. And there's a lot of stuff uh, beginning in 141 and 142 which kind of starts dealing with that Miles Professor Warren and building that saga, which is some of the most fun stuff. This volume features some of the biggest issues in Spider-Man uh, that you can buy. Um, so uh, it's got the death of the Green Goblin and Gwen Stacy, of course, spoiler alert, and the origin of the Punisher also. So lots of good stuff contained within here. And what's interesting is from this point forward, you have a large gap in Spider-Man collected editions. So you have the volumes one through four, which are very obvious right here. And then they stop having this like volume numbering and they move on to other stuff. And so uh, if you want to collect everything up until Roger Stern begins his run on Spider-Man, you're going to have to get all the Marvel Masterworks. And the Marvel Masterwork numbers from that point forward are volumes 15 uh, through volume 21. And then you will be able to read all the way through Spider-Man. I don't, I don't have all of those, um, but I do want to just uh, let you know they exist. There's also a uh, complete cl uh, original Clone Saga uh, complete collection, and that goes up through issue 151, I believe. So uh, those are in there, but then there's these, you know, as far as omnibuses go, from 142 up until the 200s, you will not actually get any new issues. And so, until Roger Stern. Now this is all Roger Stern's writing right here, and it's a giant omnibus. I reviewed this on the channel last year, so you can go look for that if you wanna see it. This is brilliant, brilliant work right here. Roger Stern took Spider-Man to a whole new level uh, with this volume. And this collects Spectacular Spider-Man 41 through 61, 43 through 61, and 85 which this is the actual Spectacular Spider-Man comic. So he was writing Spectacular Spider-Man uh, from those issues uh, early, early on. And there is no collected omnibus of the early, early Spectacular Spider-Man stuff. Those are, uh, again, available in Marvel Masterworks form uh, for the first 20 issues. But from 21 to 42, uh, you're out of luck on those for collected editions at the moment. Um, and then he started with Amazing Spider-Man 206 for a fill-in issue and went to 224 to 252 for his actual run and annuals 16 and 17. Again, this is just a brilliant, brilliant run. Um, in Spectacular Spider-Man, there's a lot of focus on Peter as sort of like his intern at Empire State University, um, but he goes into, uh, that kind of fades as he gets into the Amazing Spider-Man run of this, and uh, some uh, cool characters get introduced here. Uh, of course, there's the famous Juggernaut issue uh, where he fights the Juggernaut. Uh, there's the Hobgoblin and that whole uh, mystery, which is unveiled and then, of course, ended throughout this run. And he uh, bows out right at this point where Spider-Man gets the um, alien costume. And uh, then Tom DeFalco and Ron Friends take over. And there's one issue where it's kind of a transitional issue at the end of this that shows that. Again, we have just kind of another lapse for Spider-Man, and we don't have an omnibus of all the uh, Alien Costume Saga stuff, but we do have a complete collection, volume one and two, of those issues. Uh, so you can read those and go along, and in there, uh, and then uh, there's, a, there's a little break, um, but 
most of it is collected from uh, the Epic Collection from this point forward, even though we've got, uh, we've got a couple weird omnibuses that have a smattering and incomplete run of things going on next. And that's what I'm gonna talk about here uh, with these odd omnibuses, which are uh, very team-based, art artistic team and character-based focus, which we have Spider-Man versus Venom and Spider-Man and uh, by David Michelini and Eric Larson. So these overlap. And Spider-Man vs. Venom contains uh, issue 258, just to introduce that alien costume, issue 300, which is the, the big foil cover, 315 to 317, which has some Venom stuff, 332, 333, 346, 347, 361, 363, 364, and 378 through 380, and then a bunch in there. Now that 378 through 380 is uh, the Maximum Carnage storyline, so this is the only way to get the Maximum Carnage storyline in that format, um, if you want an oversized uh, format for that. And does this not contain, oh, it does contain that, Amazing Spider-Man 375, but not all of it, because 375 as an issue had some backup stories, but the main storyline in here uh, was one of the major pivot points in the character of Venom as they transitions him to an anti-hero from a Spider-Man villain. Now, of course, like I said, that, that goes all the way from 300 to 375 with a lot of missing issues inside. But the Eric Larson and David Michelini volume contains uh, issues 287, so they did a fill-in, 324, 327, 329 through 350, so you get a whole big block of run there in between that. So you can kind of go through these two omnibuses and, and piece together a lot of what happened with Spider-Man during that time. And then, of course, there was an ish, uh, a volume called Just Plain Spider-Man, uh, which <laughs> this, again, just takes place right after the beginning of it. And I'm going to show you another volume which overlaps with it, which is called Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane. So this is they launched a title. They had a, a spectacular Spider-Man and a web of Spider-Man going at the same time, and they launched a third title, Spider-Man, which overlaps with these two volumes uh, it, it crosses over with Maximum Carnage, of course, in the 20s. But the uh, Eric Larson volume has issues... Um, uh, let's see... 19 and 20 in here. Whereas uh, the Todd McFarlane volume of an omnibus goes through 1 through 14 and 16. So a lot of that gets collected, and you can kind of get that little crossover in there and in these. So 19, 20 is in there, and Spider-Man... Uh, what is it? Numbers, where are we? I'll find it somewhere in here. Web, there's just too many issues. Um, <laughs> uh, Spider-Man 1990, 35 through 37. So you get three issues in the Venom collection, which is the Maximum Carnage storyline. There's a lot of orphaned issues of that, too. It would have been nice if they did a full-size omnibus of this uh, Spider-Man rather than just doing a Todd McFarlane volume but gone up and done like maybe the first 25 issues or something like that through here. So this brings us up through Maximum Carnage uh, in terms of what the storylines are. Um, and we're going to get into the, a weird era of Spider-Man after this, but I forgot to, to show you a volume, uh, which is kind of not continuity but kind of is. And this is called Untold Tales of Spider-Man. Now, they launched a brand new, all new number one uh, issue of Spider-Man, and they ran this uh, volume at 99 cents to try to get people to buy into it. Um, and it was a cheaper deal, and they did that because the stories were throwbacks. And this actually takes place in between issues of the first volume of Amazing Spider-Man. So you get to see a lot of Peter's high school years growing up. You get to meet a cast of characters of high schoolers who were not in the original run uh, and they build up because there really wasn't a ton of Peter Parker High School uh, within that original run. He, he moved to college pretty quickly and we didn't get to see a lot of background there. Um, and so they brought it back uh, with Kurt Busiek writing. And this is brilliant, guys. This is some of the best Spider-Man out there. Um, I really enjoy it. And there's a whole map of how to read these in between issues of Spider-Man or the original Amazing Spider-Man, like what issue takes place where. So you can actually read through this with the Amazing Spider-Man first volume and really get a nice uh, nice storyline 
that builds through there and actually continues uh, and the, the, this uh, sort of riffs off of that volume a lot. Kurt Busiek has a lot of history uh, knowledge of Marvel Comics, and this is really just a love letter to that era, which is, which is why I love it so much. All right. So after Maximum Carnage, there's a whole range of books which like don't get collected in any format, really. Um, but this is the bulk of, uh, of those eras. Really, all that's missing in omnibus form is a lot of that alien costume saga, which I said is also in a complete collection form right now, and then uh, the Craven's Last Hunt storyline, which is available in Epic Collection. So you can get those, and if you just get that storyline plus these, and uh, you you have almost all of Spider-Man that, that's relevant at that point uh, to be able to read. So, and then we get into a weird situation called the Clone Saga. And there are oh, big omnibuses of these. Uh, there are two omnibuses of filling up the Clone Saga, and these did not sell quite as well as uh, a lot of the others, because this is a, a weird era in Spider-Man history where it's very controversial, um, and a lot of people didn't like it. It went on a little too long because there were just too many titles, and it was very convoluted and confusing at points. But the Clone Saga starts in Amazing Spider-Man 394. So you'll notice that uh, you get in the Venom trade up to 380, and then you get 394 here. So you're missing a whole swath of, uh, of about 12 to 14 issues, which was very interesting at the time. Uh, Peter Parker's parents, re quote, returned from the dead, and it turned out it was a plot from the chameleon, and uh, it was very interesting stuff. There's a, there's a really good storyline in there. Um, and there's also a, a book called Shrieking, which Shriek from Maximum Carnage returns and uh, becomes comes into her own a bit. Now this collects uh, Amazing Spider-Man 394 through 401, so it's not as long as it seems, but the problem is there's so many freaking Spider-Man books at this time, there's a lot of books in here. Um, even though it only was about six months worth of material, you also got Web of Spider-Man 117 through 125. Um, you get Spider-Man 51 through 58, so we've got the beginning of that book collected. We've got a couple issues from the 30s, and now we're up to the 50s in that volume. Spectacular Spider-Man 217 through 224, missing most Spectacular Spider-Man in terms of what's collected there. Same with Web of Spider-Man, unfortunately. A lot of the early books of those are very good. Spider-Man Unlimited, which was a quarterly volume of a 64-pager that came out with, uh, and they had issues 7 through 9 in here. Uh, Spider-Man A Funeral for an Octopus, one for three, because, spoiler, they killed Dr. Octopus. The Clone Journal, and Spider-Man Collector's Preview. Oh, joy, Collector's Preview. These will all be all be worth something someday, these issues, I'm sure. <laughs> this gets into that era where they're overprinting everything. There's too much going on. These, these Spider-Man clone issues, I was fond of them when I was a kid because they had, they had shiny holographic covers, and they were flip books with different covers on the other side uh, that actually reprinted the original clone issue uh, from issue 149. Uh, so you can remember who the clone is if you had not read those at that point. And I remember the, the value of that issue shot up so high at the time I was unable to procure it, um, and oh well. But I read it through this, read the reprint, and figured out who the clone was. Was not expecting this to happen, and then of course it blew out of proportion. Um, then we get into the Clone Saga Volume 2. And this covers the end of the Peter Parker era of Spider-Man. So what they decided to do was make it so that the Peter Parker who married Mary Jane would ride off into the sunset, and the new clone Peter Parker was actually the real Spider-Man. And um, that was a great way to handle things. And so they got to relaunch Spider-Man and all that uh, as, a, as a, a kind of a new character with a new background, a new life. He felt a little hipper and a little younger. The editorial really hated the spider marriage, and they just could not deal with it. Uh, sadly, uh, just uh, lazy, lazy editorial. But they didn't like it, so they wanted to write that out, and they kept trying to write it out in various ways coming up soon over everything, which we'll find. Um, and this goes through Amazing Spider-Man 402 to 406. So again, this was only one year of material, but it felt forever because there's just so many issues. We got super specials. We have Spider-Man 59 through 63, Spectacular Spider-Man 225 to 229, and they killed off uh, the uh, Spectacular Spider-Man series shortly thereafter. Um, Web of Spider-Man 126 to 129, that's the end of Web of Spider-Man. Uh, a bunch of Venom super specials, because those all tied in. They did a whole um, Planet of the Symbiotes uh, storyline, which is pretty interesting, through Venom. 
some new warrior stuff because the Scarlet Spider in here, who's the clone or not clone, you, you think he's real at this point, uh, joined the new warriors for a few issues. Very, very bizarre stuff. And uh, we get a team up and we get a Lost Years uh, miniseries, which was very good, which uh, which goes over uh, Ben Riley's history. Oof. Oh my gosh, so much Clone Saga. Now we get to the next era of the Clone Saga. There's four freaking omnibuses of this stuff, guys. Um, and this is where Ben Riley becomes Spider-Man because Peter realizes he's actually the clone. And so Ben Riley takes over the mantle. He gets a brand new costume. And it starts out, there's four issues uh, where he is just starring the Scarlet Spider. And, and all the issues stopped for a month and there was no Spider-Man. And instead you get Web of Scarlet Spider, the spectacular Sp Scarlet Spider, amazing Sp Scarlet Spider, and it goes on, right? And so what they did at this point is they killed off uh, Web of Spider-Man, as I mentioned. They also killed off, uh, they haven't killed off Spectacular Spider-Man yet, but it's coming. Um, <laughs> so they killed, so, so you get um, all those, you get Amazing Spider-Man 407 to 410 at an annual. You get Spider-Man, which is uh, 64 to 67. So you've got that whole run collected of all these. Uh, you get Spectacular Spider-Man 230 to 233. And then you get a new series, which they launch for uh, the brand new guy. Instead of Web of Spider-Man, you get Sensational Spider-Man. And it starts with a zero to make it super fancy. So you get zero for three there. And a bunch of mini series along with that. And this covers most of uh, Ben Reilly's deal. They are going to come out with a volume two this summer to complete this entire run. Uh, and all this stuff has been printed before in complete collection editions. So it's not all that new. Now, after this era, um, Spider-Man uh, flounders for a while because what happens is they determine that Ben Riley is not the actual real Spider-Man and that Peter Parker was really the real Spider-Man all along. Surprise, surprise. Because readers complained so much they just could not literally even. And uh, killed off the clone just to get rid of it. Um, and it was drawn out way too long for that conclusion. That conclusion was the most unsatisfying conclusion in comics. Um, I was very, very sad. They should have just left Ben Reilly as his own character or done something, something anything different. <laughs> um, but after that, everybody was just super burnt out. Nobody really liked the resolution, and they really decided to play it safe with Peter for a while. And uh, the Green Goblin was brought back during the course of this, and there's this whole conspiracy of the Green Goblin where, you know, nobody remembers he's a bad guy and uh, it's very it's very bizarre for the next several issues. But all of those are sparsely collected. There's a few different um, uh, books with that, which is uh, Spider-Man by uh, it's, uh, Todd DiZago and Mike Wieringo, um, which covers only the sp sensational Spider-Man stuff. There's a crossover called Spider-Man Spider Hunt where, where Peter Par or Spider-Man's a fugitive and wanted by the law again, um, but it takes a few issues. Then there's Identity Crisis because he's wanted by the law. He makes up a bunch of new superhero costumes for himself, which don't really pan out. And then there's The Gathering of Five, which really seals the deal on that whole Norman chapter. And at that point, like, they decide to reboot the entire thing. None of that's collected, uh, and there's a ton of orphaned issues in there that are not collected in any sort of form. So you really miss out on a lot. You get a little smattering of trade paperbacks, but nothing like these omnibuses or anything like that. So um, that's where we are at that point. And then you get a weird omnibus again. So here's what goes down. They relaunch Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man with all new number ones, and they bring it down to two issue, two issues per month. Um, so it's a little more manageable than four uh, per month uh, for a while. They'll, 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 uh, they start adding in books like Marvel Knights, Spider-Man, and Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man later on, and it just, it just gets uh, clustered again. But uh, they did a volume of Spider-Man by John Byrne, which is just a total John Byrne-centric thing. And there are different collections which collect the bulk of this era um, with the non-John Byrne content um, and the uh, and 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 what goes on here, so they put John Byrne on Amazing Spider-Man for the relaunch for one through eighteen, but there was a sister title, just Spider-Man, which went along with it um, also during that time. And the unfortunate part about this omnibus 
is that there's issues that cross over to that Spider-Man. So you don't get the complete story a lot in this omnibus. So the, there's a couple issues that cross over into the other the other deal and you don't get the complete story because this only collects the John Byrne stuff. So you really cannot complete those stories. And it really has a big impact on a lot that's going on in this, uh, in this era. So in order to get rid of the marriage, they kill off Mary Jane for a little bit. Uh, that made me very mad at the time. Um, I got, I got very mad as a, as a high schooler, uh, because I'm like, gosh, dang it. Like, why, why do you got to do that? Um, and then they start dropping clues that she's not actually dead kind of later on. They kind of, I don't know. I don't know if it was intentional or what the deal was. We'll find out maybe someday. All right. So this collects actually, so it's got a bunch of other stuff too, which is unrelated to that era, but it's got Marvel team up 53 through 55 and 59 through 70 and 75. Marvel Team Up is a just team up issue. They're they're one offs and they collect random Spider Man stories uh, that they of course there's team ups with different characters every single time and it just features other Marvel characters. So that's that. Um, it's got 189 and 190 from Amazing Spider Man because I guess John Byrne drew those so you can read a couple issues and 206. Uh, annual number 13, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider Man 58. Uh, so just random stuff. Spider Man Chapter One Zero. Uh, through 12. This is a John Byrne uh, miniseries, which is pretty decent, uh, which uh, just goes over some old stuff of Spider-Man um, by itself, and then uh, Marvel Authentics Amazing Spider-Man number one. But really, this is the continuation from uh, the end of that Spider-Man era up until uh, issue number 18. Now, I definitely recommend getting the uh, volumes the next chapter instead of this, which are out of print and hard to find, because they contain those sister title uh, books also and then it goes up into a couple uh, eras right before when JMS takes over called Revenge of the Green Goblin there's a big storyline where the Green Goblin comes back again uh, and that brings us to the end of the, the sort of Howard Mackey era uh, here which this does not complete and Light and Darkness which uh, which uh, is uh, Paul Jenkins run at the time all right um, so I don't know. I mean, you're not missing much with this era anyway. Um, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was when I was a kid, but especially when you don't get the, the, the fix here, it's pretty bad. Um, I bought this mainly so I could eventually read these Marvel team ups, which I don't have collected in, and, um, the, uh, chapter one stories. So, and after that in omnibus form, we have the JMS era. And this is split into two omnibus volumes. I have the second on the way. It's actually not all the way in print yet because of the whole COVID-19 thing as of this video. And uh, it is going to be hitting stores shortly to complete the run. Now this volume collects Amazing Spider-Man, uh, which was uh, renumbered and restarted, uh, which back in the John Byrne book here. 30 through 58, so a full complete run. And then they decided to renumber it again because they reached number 500 and they realized, oh, well, we got our number one issue money in, so we better get our 500 issue money in. And they renumber it back to the uh, uh, original numbering at that point. And it goes all the way through 514. So JMS has this very unbroken run um, of about, uh, gosh, 45 issues or so. I guess 44 issues. Yes, yeah, 45. Um, right in here, which is awesome. Um, and he, nobody's messing with him. Most of these stories are really good. They hit everything about this was controversial and everybody, you know, just started whining on the internet. But uh, he did a storyline where Spider-Man, uh, like, had this whole mystical thing going on where the spider chose him. Um, uh, and he, he had to deal with all these, like, mystical spider beings and things like that, which I really liked, to be honest. Um, I thought that was really fun. Mary Jane was back in the picture. She came back, and that made me happy, too. Uh, and Peter took up a job as a teacher, uh, as a science teacher, which, uh, which worked very well for Peter. Marvel didn't like it because, of course, it ages Peter again, and they didn't want Peter to age more. But it felt really good. Now, there is a controversial storyline in here called Sin's Past, where uh, it's very unfortunate, and it has uh, uh, a retcon where Gwen Stacy banged Norman Osborn, and there's two Norman Osborn children uh, that come back to, to haunt Peter. Um, and ugly stuff. I just don't like uh, going back to characters like that. JMS is not responsible for that. JMS um, uh, wanted to write a storyline where uh, Peter actually 
uh, had children through Gwen that uh, he wasn't aware of, uh, which would have been a little more interesting and, and not felt as dirty, I guess. Uh, it still kind of would have been. But uh, they didn't want to do that uh, because they didn't want it, and they thought for some reason having Norman do it would be better, and so he twisted to the editorial for that. And this marks where JMS starts to get mad and starts to have fights with editorial because, you know, he's a good writer who writes good characters and good work, and the editorial twists it. In volume two, it's going to go back and... Um, go back to regular stories and then it gets into crossover mania and this is where jms got mad at marvel overall uh is he had to cross over with civil war so he had to do those and then they did a back in black crossover to cross over all the titles to help all the other titles sell better and uh and th those two things back to back just were, were pretty draining storyline wise and then it went into what the infamous one more day where marvel mandated that peter no longer be a married character uh, so they could de-age him. And uh, JMS uh, rage quit the book. He threatened to take his name off of it, and that storyline is in Volume 2 of The Omnibus, uh, which is on its way to my house now. And uh, I'll review these eventually uh, for their entirety. But yikes. That's where I quit Spider-Man, pretty much. Uh, I was pretty uh, irritated by that storyline, and I, I was very offended as a reader that they would just kind of not care and and, re and I realize they're going back to reset everything and nothing matters at that point so it's like why would I why would I bother now further on there is Spider-Man Tangled Web this is a uh, a quick mini series which is like it basically highlights friends and families of Spider-Man and villains and their backstories and goes through different characters and you get to see how Spider-Man impacted their lives and this is the complete series of this these were pretty good a lot of one-offs and, and nobody really references them continuity wise but but still some solid stories it's almost anthology like in its nature so uh worth the read i read them in issue form um i'll get to reading that omnibus skin also and then we have an odd one superior foes of spider-man and uh, you guessed it i just bought it because it was spider-man and i'm like might as well finish my collection i guess there were 17 issues of this uh, Spider-Man's deadliest foes in their own books at last. Not him or him or her or them. We're talking about Boomerang, the Shocker, Speed Demon, Overdrive, the new Beetle. And wait, has she even met Spidey? Uh, so these are random uh, villains. Um, it takes place during the Superior Spider-Man, which is after all that nonsense. And I have not read all that yet. So we'll get around to this at some point. All right. Um, I should note uh, there is one other omnibus that contains... Some pretty Spider-Man related material, which is Jeff Loeb and Tim Sales deal. These were miniseries, and uh, he did four different miniseries. Captain America White's the other one. Um, and uh, these were all very solid. Tim Sales is a really good right, uh, uh, artist, and Jeff Loeb is, uh, you know, he's a, he's a fast-paced writer. So Spider-Man got a miniseries in here also. So if you want to just read that, um, it's not really continuity impacted, but it is it. And that is every Spider-Man omnibus release so far. Like I said, there's going to be that uh, Spy uh, JMS Volume 2 uh, arriving shortly. And then there will be uh, Ben Riley uh, Volume 2 later this year. I think that's all that's been announced for Spider-Man so far. And uh, we'll see where it goes from here. You can read a lot of Spider-Man, as you can see. This, this should take you a long time to read if you read all of these. So good luck hunting. Uh, the ones that are out of print as of this video are uh, volumes two and three. Those are very hard to find. Um, the Todd McFarlane one here is medium hard to find. The uh, Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane is medium hard to find. Roger Stern is out of print and pretty hard to find. Volume one's starting to get there, but not all the way. Um, and the rest are pretty easy to obtain. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed. I will be back later. Hit that like and subscribe button and let me know what you are reading or if you're interested in any of this stuff. I'll talk to you later.